and welcome to St. Andrew. Uh, glorious day out there today. A few black flies out, but eh, they feed the trout, so that's a good thing. Uh, so, uh, announcements from the congregation. Where is Dale? Is Dale here? Oh, he's, he's busy out there somewhere. Um, but I'm sure if Dale, oh, Dale's upstairs. <laughs> Dale, you have anything you want to say about the uh, yard, the the church cleanup day? Yes, there we go. Everybody is welcome, and if you check your, yeah, free lunch, right? Um, May 11th, spring cleanup day. Lots of little jobs to do, and a few big jobs. Um, the other thing that I want to point out is that on May 18th, which is a Saturday will be a uh, benefit bean supper for my Philmont group. And uh, um, thanks be to God, we are raising money pretty nicely at this point um, to, for, to defray costs for the travel to get out to New Mexico. Um, so there is a sign up on the easel out in the narthex for people to bring desserts. Um, we'll be doing will be cooking the, the meal and my group will be serving so if you would like to sign up to bring desserts that would be greatly appreciated and then of course come and eat and hopefully uh, have a good time any oh Liz has an announcement good morning um, last week I think it was last week I said something about purchasing a new rug for the kids corner out here behind the glass window if you're interested in donating towards that um, if you would let me know by today or you can put something in the plate by today we're gonna order it by next week so we can get that done we're also gonna plant uh, paint a chalkboard along the wall there for the kids to color on with some magnetic paint underneath and I had a my friend owns a tie-dye company I had her commission a big tapestry that looks like fishnets floating on water I'm going to be using that to make some sit-upon cushions and some lap desks for kids to use during worship so if you would like to donate towards any of that we would really appreciate it thanks neat thank you okay. other announcements okay. seeing none Good morning, and again, welcome. If you are a visitor with us today, a particular welcome. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see more of you. Now, Scott or uh, Matt and Audra Gurin are back. I think our first returning uh, summer residents. Welcome. A couple of uh, additional updates or reminders. Uh, tomorrow morning at Irwin and Crystal's house is our first meeting of the uh, Lot Acquisition Committee, looking into the uh, trying to acquire the property on the other side of the playground. So if you have any uh, questions or would like to be part of that, please let me know or get in touch with Irwin. And uh, Property Committee is continuing their work on the uh, exterior sign. So that's, uh, please do keep that in prayer. And if you have any uh, questions or ideas about that, please talk with a Property Committee member. And uh, do keep reading your uh, bulletin, as Jim says. Also the weekly update that comes out on Thursdays. We have a lot going on over the coming weeks. Uh, very exciting, uh, so please do, we do our best to keep you updated. Please do uh, keep um, your eye on all the upcoming events. Let's take a moment and prepare ourselves for worship. What, what did you say?
And those who are able, please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess what we have heard from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, in the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Thank you. 
be with you. Let us join together in prayer. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading today, on this day, the sixth Sunday of Easter, is a reading from the book of Acts, chapter 10. While Peter was still speaking, the Holy Spirit fell upon all who heard the word. The circumcised believers who had come with Peter were astounded that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter said, Can anyone withhold the water for baptizing these people who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have? So he ordered them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. And then they invited him to stay for several days. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And the psalm today is Psalm number 98. 
it will be spoken responsively. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with a harp, with a harp and the voice of song. The trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and all who dwell therein. Let the their hands, let the hands be joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and all the peoples with equity. Time for our children's message. Thank you all very much for coming up today. It's great to see you. So I wanted to share with you that in a couple minutes, Jim is going to read the second lesson. And part of it really bugs me. Okay? What, it, what Jim's going to read is the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments and his, that's God's commandments. And God's commandments are not burdensome. You know, I was reading that this week, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me, right? Because hm. there's a lot of things that God expects us to do that I really have to work hard at, right? So it seems, maybe it seems strange a little bit that a pastor has trouble with God's word, but I do sometimes. I think all of us do at times. And when God expects me to forgive somebody that maybe hurt me, or help somebody in need and I'm really tired, that feels pretty burdensome to me. But as I was thinking about it, I realized too that sometimes it is hard to do the right thing, but after you do it, it feels pretty good, you know? So sometimes it feels better, you feel better having done the right thing, even if it's hard work, than if you took it easy all day. So I guess God's word is true after all, but I just needed to think about it a little bit. So the next time that you all have something hard to do, just think about that and that, you know, even though it's hard to do, that by doing it, you will feel a lot better after it's done. All right? Thanks for coming up today. <laughs> what a lead in. <laughs> okay, so today the second reading is from the first letter of John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the parent loves the child. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we obey his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. burdensome. <laughs> For whatever is born of God conquers the world. And this is the victory that conquers the world, our faith. Who is it that conquers the world but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. 
not with the water only, but with the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one that testifies, for the Spirit is the truth. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For the sixth Sunday of Easter is from the fifteenth chapter of John. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing, but I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Grace and peace be with you through the power of the Holy Spirit, from God our Father and from our newly risen Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There are two words I want to look at today in our Gospel reading. The first is joy, the second is friends. I think if we are honest about it, both of these words, in the way that John uses them, should cause us some questions. That is to say, they will cause us questions or issues if we don't ignore them or simply brush them aside. We do that too often, you know. Oh, there is a lot in the Bible or that we hear in church that we pay attention to, of course, particularly when we agree with what we hear. But when we don't agree, when the Bible or the church tells us something we have difficulties with that we don't want to hear, far too often we decide, well, that's simply said for a fact. We aren't really expected to follow that. And this allows us to ignore that part of God's word, confident that our own plans and ideas of what it means to follow Christ are far wiser. Well, back to the text at hand. Two words, joy and friends. Jesus tells the disciples, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. Disciples having joy? Even harder to believe, Lutherans having joy? Joy in our faith? Practically unheard of. Faith isn't supposed to be a joyful thing. 
It's supposed to be a hard thing, full of shoulds and should nots, full of requirements and expectations. Hard work and sacrifice, that's what faith is all about. And here is Jesus saying that he wants the disciples' joy to be full. You know, I remember watching my dad go off to work in the morning and noticing how slowly he moved at times, how little enthusiasm he seemed to have. At one point I said something to my mom about never wanting to do anything I didn't enjoy, which immediately earned me a lecture about how adults couldn't always do what they wanted, and that sometimes, many times, it was necessary to do perhaps what one didn't want to, be, to do, but needed to be done. Now, mom's lecture probably didn't have too much effect on me at the time, but a few years later, I was leading a backpacking trip for Carolyn Furness Lutheran Church Camp, along with a bunch of teenagers in the Shenandoah Mountains. An 80-pound pack on my back, climbing a 20,000-foot peak. Okay, it was really probably a 25-pound pack <laughs> and a 6,000-foot peak, but it felt like a lot more. Hot, sweaty, muscles aching, feet swelling, and feeling like that mountain was going to go on forever. I do remember thinking that if, if, mind you, I made it to the end of that five-day hike, I was never, ever going to leave the comforts of home and civilization again. <laughs> and I went on feeling that way until I completed the hike. Jesus tells the disciples, so that your joy may be full. He does not promise that the disciples will simply be happy. He does not promise that your life and my life will be light and easy. In fact, in many places, Jesus promises that if we dare to follow him, the world itself will reject us and persecute us and make our lives very, very difficult at times. Nevertheless, Jesus declares to the disciples and to you and to me that if we do follow where the Son of God leads, our joy will indeed be full. Today, I understand only too well that there were many days when my dad was not thrilled to go off to work, when I am sure he would have much rather done a hundred other things. But with that discipline of continuing on, of struggling through the hard times, I believe my dad also knew a peace and contentment that he would never have known otherwise. True, when I was in the middle of that five-day hike, you could say, at least in mixed company, I was not having a good time. I most certainly was not comfortable nor were things going easy. But having completed that hike, having felt muscle and bone and sinews working together the way God intended this body to work, having felt the victory 
in the deep satisfaction of having overcome that mountain, having won that challenge, I can tell you there was indeed great joy and satisfaction. The second word in today's gospel that we should have trouble with if we take scripture seriously is friend. We usually have little trouble considering Jesus as Lord. Titles such as Messiah and Savior usually roll right off our tongues. But Jesus as friend? That might be a little too touchy-feely for some of us. The hymn, What a Friend We Have in Jesus, notwithstanding to reduce the Son of God, the one through whom all things came into being, to Jonathan Vogel's buddy, is just a little too much. Yet again, those are Christ's words to the disciples. I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. So one reading of our gospel today might have us with happy-go-lucky disciples all skipping around having a great time with their pal Jesus. Not exactly. Jesus is still the disciples' Lord and Master. As he makes very clear just a few verses later, you did not choose me. I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit. In a line or two beyond that, we read, I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. Jesus is still Lord and Master. But John's Gospel gives us a different perspective on what it means to be a disciple. A very important perspective for us to see because we don't usually think of our calling that way. Yes, the work of God's people is often hard. It requires courage and discipline. Why do you think we are called disciples after all? But there is also joy in our calling. Joy in living a life of faith and integrity. Joy in serving our neighbors so that they too might know God's blessings. Joy in following our Lord's commands knowing that he wants what is best for us. For God's children. Finally, joy in knowing that you and I serve a Lord and Master who is not a slave driver or a destructive tyrant or an unforgiving oppressor, but a Lord and Master who calls us friend. Amen.
us together proclaim our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all those in need of good news. Your Holy Spirit falls upon all who hear your word. Fill your church with the gifts of your spirit and give understanding hearts to those who strengthen our commitments with our ecumenical and interreligious partners. God of grace, hear our prayer. You speak and the face of the earth is renewed. Revive your creation that habitats and every kind of living thing may flourish. Protect endangered species and help us to care for all your creatures. God of grace, hear our prayer. O oh God, your world is divided and the nations rage. Provide protection for those whose lives are being torn apart due to the, due to the perils of war and for those who are under assault and or are being forced into violence beyond their nature. In particular, we ask for your power to be at work for the people of the Ukraine, as well as those in Jerusalem and Gaza. Grant wisdom and vision to the world leaders so that they may seek justice, peace, and the good of all. Strength, strengthen international partnerships and cooperation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your, your children are in need. Comfort all those who suffer, especially those afflicted by anxiety, depression, and mental illness. Help us to be conduits of your love in our care for one another. We lift before you particular situations or people, either aloud, silently, or by chat. Hear our prayer. Lord, your work is done in this place with our hands. Bless the ministries of this congregation that we may embody your love for the world. Inspire those who plan and lead worship, council members, committee members, and volunteers. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your blessed saints now rest in you. Give us thankful hearts for those who have gone before us. And at the last, bring us all together around your heavenly banquet table. God of grace, hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. Amen. And now the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share a sign of God's peace with one another and with chat on Zoom. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace, Sam. Peace, Dale. Peace, Irwin and Chris Joe. Sorry. Peace, Paul. Peace, Dale. Peace.
Ronnie and Randy. Peace to the Zimmy. Yes, right. sir. Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to a new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts 
ready to praise you and to respond to those in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Thanks, Father, through Jesus Christ, your beloved Son, whom you sent in this end of the ages to save and redeem us and to proclaim to us your will. He is your word inseparable from you, through whom you created all things and in whom you take delight. He is your word sent from heaven to a virgin's womb. He there took on our nature and our lot and was shown forth as your Son, born of the Virgin Mary in the Holy Spirit. He, our Lord Jesus, fulfilled all your will and won for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands in suffering in order to free from suffering those who trust you. He is the one who handed over to a death he freely accepted in order to destroy death to break the bonds of the evil one, to crush hell underfoot, to give light to the righteous, to establish his covenant, and to show forth the resurrection, taking bread and giving thanks to you, said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering then his death and resurrection, we take this bread and cup, giving you thanks that you have made us worthy to stand before you and to serve you as your priestly people. Send your spirit upon these gifts of your church. Gather into one all who share this bread and wine. Fill us with your Holy Spirit to establish our faith and truth, that we may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through whom all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Come and know Christ, broken and poured out for you.
Those who are able, please rise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raised, tell everyone what God has done. Let everyone who seeks the Lord rejoice and bear the name of Christ. Send us with your promises and lead your people forth in joy. With shouts of thanksgiving, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let us pray. Life-giving God. In the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, and the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and risen Lord. Amen.
Following our hymn and dismissal, all are invited to gather again in our fellowship hall for some continued time together. I mentioned earlier about the uh, weekly update. If you haven't been getting the weekly update, particularly if you are a, a visitor or, or a newcomer among us, uh, there are forms on the guest book. Uh, we would ask you to fill those out. Please know we do not share uh, email information or contact information with anyone. But if you could fill one of those forms out, and we will get you the, the weekly update. Receive the blessing. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Oh. 